Picking back up in Chapter 13, now we're ready to look at the cranial nerves. You have 12 cranial nerves in your body. They are all associated with the brain. They originate from the brain, exit out of the brain, and then move into the periphery of the body. Most of the cranial nerves are mixed in function, meaning some axons will be sensory and some axons will be motor. There are, however, two pairs of purely sensory cranial nerves. Each nerve has a name and it is numbered 1 through 12. It is important to learn them by their number and their name. Most people like to come up with a little saying that helps them kind of learn the nerves in order. This is the one from your textbook, On Occasion, Our Trusty Truck Acts Funny, Very Good Vehicle Anyhow. I really recommend that you come up with your own sentence that has a meaning to you. Otherwise, you're going to have to remember this. And if you mix it up on a test, that's going to drive you crazy. This is a picture showing you the location of the 12 cranial nerves exiting out of the brain. Only cranial nerves number 1 and 2, here's number 1, the olfactory nerve, number 2, the optic nerve, exit out of the brain from a different location than the brain stem. All the others extend from the brain stem. Here is number 3, the oculomotor nerve, number 4, the trochlear nerve, number 5, the trigeminal nerve, number 6, the abducens nerve, number 7, the vestibular cochlear, excuse me, I said that backwards, number 7, keep going down, we, 6 was here, 7 is here, that's your facial nerve, then 8 is your vestibulocochlear nerve, number 9 on each side is your glossopharyngeal nerve, number 10 on each side is your vagus nerve, Number 11, running down long ways, is the accessory nerve. And then our last one, number 12, we jump back here. This is the hypoglossal nerve. To help you orient yourself, if you are a little confused from Chapter 12, this large bump here, this is your pons. Small bump here is the medulla. And this is the beginning of the spinal cord. These are the mammillary bodies. So this is the hypothalamus. Thalamus is above. Let's now take a look at what each of the 12 cranial nerves is responsible for. The first cranial nerve is called the olfactory nerve. The olfactory nerves come from the olfactory receptors of your nasal cavity. They pass through really tiny holes in your ethmoid bone that are in the back and upper portions of the nasal cavity. We then combine all of these olfactory nerves into olfactory bulbs. The olfactory nerves are one of your only two purely sensory cranial nerves. Their only job in your body is to send sensations from the olfactory bulbs, the sensory receptors in your nasal cavity, back to your brain. Cranial nerves number two are called the optic nerves. They begin at the retina, then they pass through the optic canal where they converge and cross at the optic chiasma. Once they cross, they continue to the thalamus until they synapse there, then again continuing to the occipital lobe. Cranial nerve number two is your second purely sensory cranial nerve. Its only job is to, ha is to allow you to receive sensory information through your eyes and move that to your visual cortex. Our first mixed cranial nerve is number three, the oculomotor nerves. These are going to be nerves that extend out of the midbrain and move to the, through the superior orbital fissures to control your eye muscles. Their job is to help you raise and lower your eyelid, direct your eyeball into certain directions, as well as control two portions of the interior of your eye, your iris and your lens. Cranial nerves number four are the trochlear nerves. These nerves are also going to extend from your midbrain and enter into the orbits of your eye, but they only innervate your superior oblique muscle. They only have the job of directing 
your eyeball. This is the most important nerve that allows you to move your eye into different directions. Cranial nerves number five are the trigeminal nerves. These are the largest cranial nerves in your body. Now we're moving further down the brain stem, and these nerves are going to extend from the pons. The trigeminal nerves are called tri because they have three different divisions. One part goes into the eye socket, one part goes through the maxilla, and then another part goes through the mandible. The sensory portions of this nerve are going to help control various or have sensory input for various portions of your face. The third part of the nerve aids in mastication or chewing. Cranial nerve number six are called the abducens nerves. These fibers also extend from the pons and enter the orbits of the eye through the superior orbital fissure. Their primary job is to activate the rectus muscle, which also helps you move your eye. Cranial nerves number seven also extend from the pons, but as they come out of the pons, they travel through portions of the acoustic meatus in your temporal bone, converging into an area near your styloid and mastoid process on the very outside or lateral portions of your face. These are the major motor nerves of the face that innervate the muscles of your face, allowing you to have many different facial expressions. They are also involved in some of the sensory functions of your tongue that allow you to taste. So there are going to be portions of your facial nerves that have sensory receptors that in your taste buds. They travel from your taste buds to the thalamus, then converge there, moving into the insula. Cranial nerves number eight are called the vestibulocochlear nerves. These nerves are going to have two parts, the cochlear division, which helps you hear, and the vestibular region, which helps you with your equilibrium in your inner ear, which allows you to kind of have an idea of your orientation in space so you can keep your balance. It is mainly involved with sensory function, but it does help you with slight movements of the inner ear, so it's still considered a mixed nerve. Cranial nerves number nine are the glossopharyngeal nerves. These nerves are going to leave from the medulla, leave the skull, Notice this is the first time we've had a nerve actually leaving the skull. This one leaves the skull and then runs down the throat. Its job is to help you move your tongue and your pharynx when you are swallowing. The sensory function of the glossopharyngeal nerve helps you with tasting as well as some of your general sensory impulses you get as you swallow. You know, you must need to, you need to be able to feel as you're swallowing your food. So you know whether you would be choking or anything of that nature. Cranial nerves number 10 are called the vagus nerves. These are the only cranial nerves that not only leave the head, but also extend beyond the neck region. Again, they leave the medulla, similar to number nine, and leave the skull. The vagus nerve is going to move all the way down to, into the areas of the heart and lungs and abdominal viscera. They are going to be involved with some of the parasympathetic movements of these organs, which is going to be a maintenance sort of control. The sensory portion of the vagus nerve allows us to receive sensory input from these visceral organs in which they are innervating. Cranial nerves number 11 are called the accessory nerves. They are going to be formed out of what we call cervical vertebrae number 1 through cervical vertebrae number 5 region. So they actually sort of extend out of the spinal cord because you're going down to the very lower portions of the medulla before the accessory nerve itself comes out. After these nerves pass out of the cranium, they're going to go down to help innervate our trapezius and our sternocleidomastoid muscles. Recall that your trapezius is the muscle that helps you shrug your shoulders, and your sternocleidomastoid is the muscle that helps you shake your head no and shake your head yes. 
Our last cranial nerve, number 12, are called the hypoglossal nerves. They leave out of the medulla, exit the skull, and then help innervate the muscles that are involved with swallowing and speaking. I did not put it in your PowerPoint, but there is a summary table in your textbook that allows you to keep a generic idea, really easy to access, of the function of these 12 cranial nerves. 